banker men from Germany flying under the banner of the Red Sheep. They finance both sides of the war. We must hurry! That's him! The Red Shield Courier! Shoot him! No! I'm not shooting anyone. Damn it, Pop! What? He beat everyone back with the news of the war and told England that Napoleon won. The Red Shield backers in London pretended that England was doomed and started selling their English stocks. The English went into a selling frenzy to get rid of worthless English money. But the English won, right? Of course they won, but it was a trick by Red Shield. They waited until the stocks plummeted to pennies and then bought England back for nearly nothing. What? They did that? How? When the English leaders found out, they had no choice but to give themselves over to the Red Shield. Their money was gone and they were slaves to the Red Shield war debt. Since that time, the English have been paying their national taxes directly to the Red Shield private bankers. The people have no idea. But the bankers bragged about what they did to us, laughing at us all the way to the bank. Why, it's the best business I've ever done. If I can control a nation's wealth, I care not who makes its laws. Oh, is this what Jefferson wanted to show me? No. Look. They're in America, too? The Red Shield Banks are here, Pi. Seeking a way to conquer our American dream. The dream you have, Pi. The dream of free men. They tried to take over our country many times and failed because Jefferson and the Patriots vowed to stop the evil tyrants at all costs. By authority of eternal God, he would not let the bankers win here. To preserve our independence, we must not let our rulers load us with perpetual debt. We must make our choice between economy and liberty or profusion and servitude. Wow. I place economy among the first and most important of Republican virtues, and public debt is the greatest of the dangers to be feared. It is incumbent on every generation to pay its own debts as it goes. We must have a central bank to secure this country's finances. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their money, first by inflation and then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of their property until their children will wake up homeless on the very continent their fathers conquered. Jefferson, you're mad. This country will have a central bank. Who's that? America's first Secretary of Treasury. Alexander Hamilton? Not for long. Aaron Burr, Thomas Jefferson's vice president. They didn't take too kindly to our first sick treasury. Sweet shot, Burr. <laughs> the first attempt at a central bank only lasted 20 years and we shut it down. But the bankers tried again against old Hickory President Andrew Jackson. You are a den of vapors and thieves. I intend to rout you out, and by the eternal God, I will rout you out. After surviving an assassination attempt, Jackson finally defeated the bank in 1836. When asked what was the greatest accomplishment in his life, old Hickory replied, I killed the bank. And those were his last words. I killed the bank. And with real money backed with real gold, our country experienced the greatest boom in any nation's history. Oh, it was beautiful, pal. But the bankers, greedy for more power and wealth, were concocting their most ambitious plan yet to once and for all take control of the finances of the United States. In 1910, a secret meeting was held at the J.P. Morgan estate on Jekyll Island off the coast of Georgia. This meeting was so secretive, so concealed from government and public knowledge, that the ten attendees used code names. I am clearly the richest man, so I should be the one to run the super-secret central bank. I own all the oil in America. I'm clearly richer than you will ever be, hula girl. I should run the super-secret central bank. You're nothing compared to me, lube job. I shall run the secret bank. Silence! Supreme Master Leader, I didn't know you were gonna be here. I'm not. Neither are you, dumbass. Oh yeah, right, right. He's so smart. None of you shall run the bank. 
We have failed in the past because of openness. This time, the key to success is secrecy. The people must believe that they run the bank. Yes, brilliant! A sneak attack. What's the plan? We first create panic. Then we show them the solution. With our man in office and well-planned timing, we will have our central bank. And so the people think it is theirs. We shall christen it Federal. The Federal Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> they struck on December 23rd, 1913. When most of our Congress were at home eating fruitcake, these bastards, I, I mean bankers, presented their treasonous act to their newly elected accomplice, Woodrow Wilson, who had fortuitously already agreed to sign it before he was even elected. Wait, the IRS? I thought we always had the IRS. No, pile. They did this to us, too. The Fed now has the exclusive power to print America's money. They loan this money to our banks and our government at interest, putting immediate debt on our own money, printing more and more, so each dollar they print becomes worth less than the one before. Merry Christmas. What in the hell is that? That pie is how our government now must pay back these debts to the Fed. Your taxes did not go to your government. They don't? Mm. It's the greatest theft in human history. But, oh, okay, I mean, I sort of get what you're saying, but it's all so confusing. And really, Hartman, I don't see how it affects me at all. If I had more money, none of this would have happened. Hartman? Wow, what are we doing here? Oh, a little bit of shopping. Here, hold this. Get on the gas? 23 cents. Postage stamp? 3 cents. Elsa Gold? $35. Hot baby. Priceless. Let's be getting back. Hey, Hartman, I need my car, man. Oh, was that my gold, Jake? Yeah, he'll be fine. The pile. Would you agree that you have the same exact things you had in 1955? Yeah, one stamp, one gallon of gas, one ounce of gold, and one home. Wow, we just made a lot of money. Run, 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 run. Hey! Gotta pay your taxes. Bet it's nice to have made all that money. Wait, that isn't fair. Now I actually have less money. I, I can't even go buy the things I just sold. The IRS and the Fed's inflation work together, pile. They aren't just taxing gain, they are taxing their inflation. You are no richer than you were in 1955. Now, does that sound fair or American to you? Yeah, but I mean, who doesn't hate taxes? I hate the IRS anyway. Pile, the higher they make the inflation, the more your money they take. It's thievery. You're not paying taxes on any more. You are paying taxes on the same, and now, you have less. They take our property away right in front of our eyes, just like Thomas Jefferson said they would. What's that? Oh, they found us. Quick, my sword. What sword? We don't need your banking machine. I'll condemn you to die, damn it. Die! Pile, the lackey bogey on my nine. I'll take him at his knees. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence. What's happening? Where am I? I believe perhaps you understand now, Pyle, but you are afraid. JFK, Hartman, what does this have to do with my house and my dog? Oh, okay, that's enough. I, I want to go home now. This is the last president to stand up to the Fed. You must see. On June 4, 1963, President Kennedy signed Executive Order 11110. This executive order empowered the U.S. Treasury to issue real money without the Fed. It would have worked. Kennedy's plan to dismantle the Federal Reserve machine had begun. But six months later, John F. Kennedy went to Dallas 
and never return. No way. No way they could do that. The new president, Lyndon Johnson, threw out Kennedy's order. And since JFK, no president has dared confront the secret powers behind the Federal Reserve. They consolidate bigger and bigger banks, print more and more money accountable to no one, decimating our nation's wealth for the benefit of a few. Why? Why do this? If they hurt us, it hurts the global bankers too. No, Pyle. They are protected. They are too big to fail. But I'm not. Those sons of bitches! Mm, sons of bitches all. The day was cold. The wind sharp and strong. But we were determined. The bankers and their parasites had us vastly outnumbered, but their hubris made them weak. Not like us. Not like this band of immortals we have assembled. We have come to take back our... Hardman? Is that... My dog. Oh, sh Then the inevitable. The Money Kings could ignore us no longer. They sent an emissary, a cog in their machine of greed to bring about our submission. Hank Paulson. Hardman, this is blasphemy. We own the corners of the Earth. It is futile to challenge us. Oh, I've seen that look before. That of a predator taking in the scent of its prey. Bold, fearless, the look of a free man. You have come far, Hartman. Farther than most. Be smart now. Join us. We will bring you money, power, everything you want. You can be one of us, if you will kneel. This is! This is America! <laughs> 